whenever you talk about Teg, your whole being just, you, you glisten. I mean, she, she really is your life, isn't she? She's With your other animals as well. I've, I've, yeah, and, I'm, and my other dogs, got to mention Badger and Ludo, and, Bella, your husband. and Ludo, yes. my husband, yeah, yeah, he's quite important as well. <laughs> but it was, Teg was my first puppy. My other two dogs were rescue dogs, and they're fantastic. But, you know, Teg, I sort of, we grew up together in a way. We, we you know, this, this partnership started when she was eight weeks old. And... As I say, it's just been, it's something that I've always wanted to do. I worked on one man and his dog, and I used to watch those, you know, those guys with their dog and think, oh, I want to be able to do that. You know, wouldn't it be? They're, they're, it's something about, it's almost a symbiotic relationship. Mm. They seem to be able to uh, think, you, you know, think for each other. And I just thought, I'd love that sort of, that partnership with an animal. And I didn't know whether it was possible. Well, obviously it is. But also, it's Getting not just there. about that. It's because the Welsh sheepdog, they're practically extinct. Yeah, so um, that's that's one of the things that people think, you know, when you have a sheepdog, they assume it's a border collie. Mm. And border collies are amazing. I mean, that's why, in fact, that's why they became so popular. You know, you watch one man and his dog and you watch those dogs work. And, of course, they're absolutely they're, they're entrancing. On they're yeah. right on it, as you say. You know, they fixed our eyes on the sheep and, 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 they, and they seem to be able to anticipate everything that their handler wants them to do. And that's exactly what happened. When... Sheepdog trials started in the late 1800s. These sort of, you know, most dogs were kind of herding dogs, and Welsh dogs were really good kind of utility dogs. They could they could herd cattle, they could herd sheep, they could protect their owners when they would, you know, the Welsh drovers would take the animals right across Wales, up to markets in England, even as far as London. And these dogs were absolutely vital for that. But when Border Collies started making an appearance at these trials, people had their heads turned. They were thinking, oh, we want a flash little black and white mm. dog like that. And unfortunately, what that meant was that the Welsh dog and other kind of traditional herding breeds slightly got superseded or inbred with Border Collies. With the other ones. And right. so... In the, in the early 80s, a wonderful, a wonderful Welsh farmer that I met called John Davis had a beautiful Welsh dog that he was trying to find a husband for and he couldn't find one. And that's when they realised that this dog was in real peril. And, um, and so the Welsh Sheepdog Society was born to really to try and save this type of dog. And you're doing a big part of that, obviously. I hope so. On, with this show. You've also got books out about dogs, friend for life. You know, you dogs are your life. And I think, I mean, I, I'm lucky to know you in real life as well. And you've been very <laughs> outspoken and, and wonderfully open about the fact that you've decided, you and Ludo have said, we don't want children. Again, it's in the papers again today. Yeah. And your life is about your animals. But, but you got a wonderful reaction from people when you said that, didn't you? It was, it was amazing, actually, because it's one of those things, I mean, you'll be used to it too, you know, when you're interviewed for a newspaper or on a programme, people always... when Because well, I got married quite young. Ludo was a very brave man and took me on when I was 23. And so we've been together for, you know, 25 years. And, and, of course, you know, when you start being interviewed, people are always going to ask, well, you haven't got children yet, but will you be having them? <sighs> and I slightly think, you know what, it's absolutely none of your business. And I knew, I knew very early on that I didn't want children. And in the end, I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to say it. Yeah. I don't think it's anybody's business, but I think it's just easier if I come out and say, you know what, I don't want them. I've never wanted them. I know it sounds dreadful, but... That's just how I feel. And it was amazing, people's reaction. Um, so many women via social media and, you know, in, in, and in the papers themselves said, gosh, thanks for... Thanks for kind of voicing what we felt because some people just don't want kids. And you it's just not... said, you said the word dreadful. Why would it be dreadful well, to make a decision that's a very personal thing between you and your husband? That, that's exactly it. And also, you know, anyone who's got children and lots of my friends have know how hard it is. You need to go in, <laughs> you know, a hundred percent committed. Well, and with all your animals as well, which is what you have to be, though. Yeah. You have all of those. Yeah. Kate, uh, good luck with the show tonight. Thank and you so always much. Always lovely to see you. Lovely Thank to you see very you. much. Thank indeed. you. If you'd like to see even more great guests, then click here. There are plenty more fantastic interviews to come, so make sure that you subscribe. So I had a full hysterectomy, my ovaries removed, and a co-suspension. I don't know if you know what... I do not know. There's suspension bridges I know about, <laughs> but not co-suspension. Well, it's a bit like that. <laughs>